Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is my first book haul in over a year and a half. I looked back through my videos and the last time I did a book haul video was in January of 2020. Really seems like centuries ago. And since then I really have not bought that many books. There was the whole pandemic thing, there is the whole pandemic thing. And so I just ended up not buying a lot of books last year and this year. And then of course I moved country, so I got rid of books rather than buying more books. And where I live now I don't even have a bookshelf, so really I've just not had the urge to buy books for the last year and a half. But then August happened, and in August I actually accumulated a few books that I want to show you now. In fact, there were three separate occasions where I bought books in August, so let's go through them chronologically. First, there was my birthday. Yes, I am now 30 years old, and to celebrate that occasion I went to visit my parents in my hometown. And uh, among other things, I got a gift card for the local bookshop as a birthday present, which was lovely. You know, that's the bookshop that I grew up with, that I spent hours and hours of my youth in and it was nice to go there with a gift card and spend it on books. But I wasn't prepared to buy books, I wasn't expecting to buy books on that day, so I didn't really know what to look for. So I went to the bookshop and what I did was go on Twitter of course and ask for recommendations. And thank you if you were one of the people who responded with loads of recommendations for German books for me to look for. I didn't find all of them. There were some that sounded really interesting, but that just weren't on the shelves in that bookshop. You know, small town bookshops, not huge. Uh, but two books I ended up getting from your recommendations. So let me show you these now. And they are both German language books. The first one is Ada's Raum by Sharon Dodua or two. And this has just been published. When I saw the blurb for this book, my first thought was, this isn't really for me, because it is a multi-generational story that follows women throughout the centuries. I think it starts in the 16th century in Ghana and ends up in the 21st century in Germany. And it follows uh, women throughout these centuries who I'm assuming are related, so descendants of each other, but I don't know that for sure. And multi-generational storytelling is a trope that, generally speaking, I don't like. However, this has been recommended so much and I've seen it on so many favourites lists recently. It's uh, There's a real hype around this book in the sort of German-speaking literary world that uh, I just couldn't leave it on the shelf, so I picked it up. If all of the reviews I've seen of this so far are anything to go by, then this is going to be an absolute knockout novel. I've seen it compared to Virginia Woolf. I've also seen it compared to Charles Dickens. It can't be both, right? They're very different types of, uh, of authors, very different types of storytelling, but I'm very curious to see how this reads. Unfortunately, this has not yet been translated into English. I've seen the title translated as Ada's Realm in English, but I haven't been able to find a, a translation and I haven't been able to find any information about when a translation might be published. Unfortunately, German language books, even if they are really popular, often just don't get translated into other languages. So uh, if you don't read German, then I don't think you'll be able to get hold of this just yet. Maybe in the future you will. The second book that was recommended to me more than once, I believe, under my tweet was this one, Drei Kameradinnen by Shida Basia. And the title of this translates to three brackets female comrades. And uh, this is the author's second novel. Her first novel was pretty big in Germany, but I haven't read it. So I've not read this author yet, but it, Sounds very interesting. Now the premise of this one is one that really does speak to me. This is about three friends who meet up on a fateful night that is marked by dramatic events. And I'm expecting a novel that is both kind of thoughtful and introverted, but hopefully also, you know, dramatic and, uh, and has some sort of big revelation, some sort of twists and turns. 
And this is also a new release, which means that in August I bought two books that were actually published this year. This does not happen often. Again though, because it's a new release, I don't think this has been translated yet. Hopefully it will one day, but I'm looking forward to reading this in German. So these were the two new books that I bought this month. Do let me know if you're interested in reviews for either of those. I find it a little bit difficult to judge how much interest there is in me talking about German books that haven't been translated yet that I know that my English speaking audience won't be able to actually read. While I have a few viewers from Germany, I think something like 70 or 80 percent of my audience is from the USA and from the UK. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in hearing my opinion on these German books. The second occasion where I managed to buy some books this month was a flea market. I went to a flea market in a nearby city and that was really fun because it felt relatively safe. It was outdoors. I mean, it was still quite crowded, but you know, all, all must up and everything. And I was hoping to find some books because, you know, usually they're there are some books on flea markets and it was also a proper flea market, meaning it was actually people selling stuff from their homes. It wasn't just like antique vendors and people who own shops or whatever. It really seemed to be mostly be people just selling their old clothes and their old tech and their old books. And I picked up two novels, both of them bargains at one euro each. The first one that I spotted was this. Enid Blyton novel. Uh, last term at Mallory Towers. And I picked this one up because I remember my mother-in-law talking about the Mallory Towers series that she uh, really liked reading as a child. I have read Enid Blyton's St. Clair series, but I haven't read any Mallory Towers books. They sound quite similar. So Mallory Towers, like St. Clair's, is a series of novels following girls at a posh boarding school. In this case, this is a boarding school in Cornwall, and um, I've already forgotten the name of the char main character. Uh, anyway, this was published in 1951, and as you can see, this is an old edition of it. This was a reprint from 1957. You may also have noticed this is the last book in the series, so I'm not going to read this until I have read the other five books. And uh, yeah, I might get those on Kindle at some point, or maybe I'll find, I probably won't find the same edition of them, um, but maybe I'll find some other Mallory Towers books in secondhand bookshops or flea markets, and then I can make my way through the series. Um, you know, Blyton's boarding school novels are always kind of fun because they are so, <laughs> they're kind of bad in a way. They're very sort of 1940s, 1950s moralistic girls novels about how, you know, girls should be uh, good and kind, uh, but also studious, not speak out of turn and, you know, follow the instructions of the adults in their life. And, how they should be uh, willing to study and work hard and not expect too much in life. I kind of read them in a nostalgic way because I really enjoyed those St. Clair's books when I was a child, but I probably wouldn't recommend those for the young girls of today. So if you pick up one of these Enid Blyton boarding school novels, just be aware they are very much of their time. The second book I picked up on the flea market from a different seller uh, was this one. This book is called Anna Goldin Letzte Hexe, which means Anna Goldin Last Witch, and it's by Eveline Hasler. This is a Swiss author, and this book was published in the early 80s, I believe, although there was also a film made about this film in the 90s. And this is a historical novel that is based on real events, and the real event being, as you can possibly tell from the gruesome cover, the execution of the last witch in the late 18th century in Switzerland. I have come across this book before and I'm trying really hard to remember when and how it possibly, we read an excerpt from it in school or someone spoke about this when I was in school. Mm, I don't think I've ever seen the film, so it can't be that. But either way, I vaguely remember 
seeing this book before. And so when I spotted it on the flea market, I picked it up. Two or three years ago, I read Burial Rites by Hannah Kent, which was also a book based on the real events of an execution. That one was set in Iceland. And this kind of reminded me of that premise. So yeah, we'll see what this is like. It's always a little bit hit or miss reading historical fiction in German, especially though, especially older historical fiction. How to explain this to people who've never read a German historical novel. They can be really good or they can be absolutely horrendously awful. So we'll see which category this falls into. But also interested in reading it because I haven't read many Swiss novels. So those two books I picked up at the flea market, but then there was a third occasion where I ended up surrounded by secondhand books, and that was a local secondhand shop. It had furniture and clothing and just all sorts of things, even that even had like a whole bicycle section where you can buy secondhand bikes. And they had a relatively large book section, which surprised me. So I had a look around the secondhand book section and of course it was mostly filled with German novels. But I did spot a little shelf of English language books, had a look in there and spotted this. This is the second book in the Hunger Games series, Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. If you are long-term followers of this channel, you might remember that a few years ago I read The Hunger Games for the first time in my life, only about a decade and a half after the hype. I vlogged that reading experience and I made one of my reacting to a book as I'm reading it type videos. I'll link that in the description box if you want to see my chapter by chapter live reaction of reading The Hunger Games for the first time. I didn't know anything about the books at all other than the sort of children fighting to the death aspect of it. And I went into it completely unspoiled. I hadn't seen the film before. I hadn't really paid attention to discourse around the books. So uh, that was a really fun experience, but I hadn't continued the series after that. So when I saw this in the secondhand shop, I thought, hey, maybe now it's time to actually continue with the series. And I bought it. This came out in 2009. So again, I'm over a decade late to the hype. Um, I won't be vlogging this book though. I just kind of want to enjoy that without having to talk about it immediately. Uh, but I might well do a review about this at some point. Who knows? Either way, that's going on my TBR. Speaking of TBR, I really should find a place for those books. Yes, something else that I'm on the lookout for at the moment is a bookshelf because books are piling up everywhere and uh, I need somewhere to keep them. So there was my little book haul. It feels weird doing it. Like I said, I haven't done a book haul in a year and a half. And before that, in 2019, all of my book hauls pretty much were in collaboration with my friend and guest spinster Robin. And we used to go through the charity shops together and buy books and then come home and do a little haul about them later. It was really fun and I really miss doing that. Obviously, Robin and I are now separated by countries. I really hope we get to do another book haul together soon. I don't think there will be any more book hauls coming up. We'll see though. You know, maybe now I've started buying books I can't stop. It's the old booktube curse. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye!